Hey, today we're talking video hacks, techniques, products to use, and the guy who makes it happen at the Tom Ferry Show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Tom Ferry Show. Special guest, Richard, the king of our videographer work. Big shout out to you, buddy. The reason I've got him on the show today is we're gonna give you, we're gonna bedazzle you with some super secret best tips of how we do video, what Richard is doing behind the scenes with the little hacks and the little tips that will drive your results through the roof. And I gotta give you a shout out. Thank when you. you joined us, I mean, he was an, an instant game changer, but we were sitting at what, 30,000 subscribers on YouTube? About 40 when I was okay. interviewing, All yeah. Right. And where are we now? Almost 100,000. And how many months? In 11 months, less 11 than a year. 11 months, baby, congratulations. So, I don't know if you wanna have that kind of reach. I don't know if you wanna touch that many people. I don't know if you wanna cast that large of a web and reach as many prospects as you can. I think you do. That's why I've got him on the show. He's the expert. I get up and do my thing, but he's the one behind the scenes making it all happen. So, but let's talk first. I wanna give them just some context. Um, when we start looking at the reasons why video is so instrumental, so important, I mean, you and I both know today when someone says, hey Tom, will you look at my website? I'll go to the website. If there's no video there, I bounce. Like, I don't have time to read. I want you to share with me the story, share with me the pain, share with me how you solve the problems. And that's the first thing I recommend to everybody, that video is the most important medium for us to connect and engage with people. Um, the obvious one, the big one we know is in 2017, check this out, 74% of all online content consumed by video. 74% of all online content consumed by video. Um, what we know is video generates the most reach and the most engagement of Facebook. We talked about that. We've shared that stuff on the Tom Ferry Show. 55% of people are watching online videos every single day and Facebook alone generated 8 billion video view pages on average per day. Now, what's the biggest question we get? How do you do it? What do you recommend? Can I do it on my own? Equipment. Equipment. So today, I hope you got your notepad out. I hope you're like calling your videographer and saying, come watch this. You might wanna share this with someone. You know, if you've got your 18 year old who's into this stuff and you want them to start working with you, or maybe you found your own videographer who's, you know, currently, as we've talked about before, you know, the wedding photographer who's got some skills and you wanna take them to the next level, this is the conversation. So this is probably gonna be one of the most shared videos we've probably ever done. Definitely. So Richard, let's go right into the four tips on creating engaging content that drive results. So that's what we're gonna cover first. What are, the, what are those things that, you know, when, when you started working with me, you're like, we gotta do this, 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 and this to get the most results. So the first thing I would say is to determine your intention, Yep. what you wanna do with it, your goals with it, the reason why you're creating the content, and where you would publish it. So intention first and foremost, what's the result, what do I wanna contribute, what do I wanna give, and then what's the result that I wanna produce? Yes, because you can't just create content, create a video, film a video, create a post, and just publish it online. You can't just publish it and forget it, and it's there. That's what we used to do. Yes, he's referring to me, by the way, when he <laughs> says we. <laughs> So what I did is I sat down and tried to see what kind of content we were already creating, mm -hmm. who our audience was. So you gotta know your audience, mm -hmm. you gotta know what kind of content you wanna create, and you need to know how to reach that audience. Are you nervous on camera? Very, very nervous, it's my first time. I spent nine plus years behind the camera, now I'm in front of the camera. Yeah, so, so just nervous. big shout out. What, hey, what's yes. your uh, Twitter handle or, or Instagram handle if they wanna follow you? Instagram, project.richard because my life is a project, yes. ongoing, like constantly that. working on it. I like that. So, so you wanna have intention, mm -hmm. you wanna be purposeful in terms of your content creation, you wanna be thinking of the outcome, so let's put that in context. Um, I wanna be the knowledge broker in my town. I wanna be one of the most well-respected, leveraged off other agents or other consumers or other influencers' brands. So I'm gonna interview local celebrities, I'm gonna interview the mayor, yes. I'm gonna interview all the best restaurant owners, I'm gonna interview the, the principal of the school, and the outcome is to share with my viewers, yes. right, that I've got this connection, and if they're thinking about this school, they've got the inside baseball from me. Mm -hmm. Again, making me the mayor, the knowledge broker of my town, as an example. Yes. Yes. But then you also said, I think what's interesting is to really know your customer. Now, we've all talked in marketing before about the importance of having an avatar, right? Like that, that made up, you know, Betty the buyer, you know, Sam the seller. And you think about 
all the listing presentations you've been on in the last 24 months, you think about all the buyers you've met, and you're like, what are the similarities of the ones that I connected with? You know, married, single, kids, no kids, sales prices, jobs, mindset, values, right? You start looking at this and saying, all right, well, that seems to be who my ideal customer is. You identify that avatar, and then you speak to that avatar every time you do a show. Yes. Right? Yes. I mean, is that kind of what you're saying? Like yeah. same, same concept? Yeah, because everybody has a story. Everybody has a certain audience that would relate to that story. Yes. So you need to reach them. You yes. need to find those people, determine who those people are, and then reach them. Okay, so I know we're gonna get mm -hmm. into some of that stuff, but let's, mm -hmm. let's segue for a second. Yes. Do you have any insight on Instagram versus Facebook versus Snapchat versus Twitter versus YouTube versus Vimeo? and I just threw a lot of yes. them out there. Yes. Any insight? I mean, we're talking purely from a video standpoint only. Yes. So some of them are on Snapchat. Let's push that aside. Mm -hmm. Twitter's just a distribution channel yes. now. Talk about Facebook native and Instagram native videos. Um, I want to start off with YouTube because that was my main focus. Perfect. In my personal and professional opinion, I want to say that it's a lot easier to go viral on Facebook now instead of YouTube. 10 years ago, let's say 2018 compared to 2008, it was a lot easier back in the day to get 40,000, 50,000 views compared to now. One cute cat video. Yes. 10 million views. Yes, right? yeah. exactly. Not anymore. Yes, right? not now anymore. You have, to, you have to really, really put out something special. Yep to have it go viral on yes. YouTube. Yeah, because we have a million or more channels popping out every month or even every other week. Now that there has been more competition on YouTube, we're starting to focus more on Facebook. So what's going on right now is Facebook is actually trying to convert their platform into a YouTube platform. They're R&Ding YouTube. YouTube. Yep. So Facebook is trying to um, compete with Netflix right now. Yep. They have Facebook Watch, which just came out last year. Focus on Facebook. Focus on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. I wouldn't say disregard YouTube all together mm -hmm. because YouTube is still the number two most visited site on the internet. Yes. And it's owned by Google, which is the number one most visited site on, on the planet. Facebook comes in at a close number three, but they're trying to compete with YouTube and Google, trying to get that number two spot by R&Ding Netflix, R&Ding YouTube. So they're focusing more on video for the future. So is there a difference though between the video that I would shoot that I would, I would publish maybe only on YouTube and then maybe use segments on Facebook and Instagram versus just uh, social, like just doing Facebook and Instagram in your opinion? What I would do is create long form content on YouTube and Facebook, but on Facebook you could also publish shorter content based on that long form content. So mm -hmm. let's say the Tom Ferry Show, we have a full 10 minute show, we take those into one minute, two minute segments, the one minute segments we put into Instagram for our followers, couple yep. posts per week, and then on Facebook we post the same one minute, two minute snippets for us to boost. So interesting yeah. enough, and, and you just shared something that I know many of you pay attention, like you're, you're listening to the content, I want you to observe what we do, right? Every Tuesday, Tom Ferry Show goes out an email, lots of people get it. It's not on YouTube, but it is on YouTube. It's on TomFerry.com. That's very intentional. This is a marketing strategy. We want them to be at our website, not YouTube. Does that make sense? But then when Richard took over, he's like, we've got to start taking little micro you know, snippets of each of these. So you take a brand new listing. You're all excited about it. Big drone listing, super fun, great looking property. You see the fire, you see the ocean, whatever it may be, the features of the home. And then you cut that into one minute, 30 second additional clips that go Facebook and Instagram. And we had this conversation with Tom Bilyeu, who we had mm -hmm. on the show recently. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I get more views on the Insta and Facebook small clips than I do even in, you know, on my YouTube channel, mm -hmm. which Definitely. is bananas. So again, we're talking ideas, but that's a very tactical thing you need to consider. So we were with Gary Vaynerchuk a couple weeks ago at his event. I know you mm -hmm. and D-Rock and others were kind of yeah. nerding out on all this stuff together. Uh -huh. But overwhelmingly, what did we hear? Over-index on Facebook, mm -hmm. over-index on Facebook. Video is the only way. And I know you've heard me say that before, but I just want to reinforce it, that if you're not shooting two to three videos a week on your Facebook channel, you're just missing an enormous opportunity to, to brand yourself and to be that, I, I use the word celebrity, but let's just call it the most recognizable agent so you're an option for all those consumers in your town. Let's go to one of the questions we get all the time, which is what equipment do you guys use? So for, you know, for some of them, that whether it's them or their videographer or someone on their team that's learning all this stuff, what equipment do we recommend? All right, so I would recommend using DSLR cameras. For us at the Tom Ferry Show, we do a two camera setup. Sometimes during interviews we do three. We bring in two Canon cameras and then one 
GH5 camera. What we use is a Lumix GH5. We have the Canon 70D. The reason why I like using the Lumix GH5 is because Canon causes a few problems every once in a while, like record, recording would stop, battery would die, overheating, but it's very durable. It works all the time as long as you have power and storage. So really awesome camera. We're going to have all the information down in the blog at tomfrey.com. Yes, that is our yes. website. That so is our website. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So yes. you, you just recommended all that stuff. But what about microphones? Yes. What about lighting? You know, I mean, we've got some amazing people here watching this that are, mm -hmm. you know, they've stepped it up. They've moved beyond, even though I know we're going to talk about, you know, DIY and yes. do it on your phone yes. and how amazing that is. But some of them are going to really, they're going to want to take it to the next level. Yes. So any other tips on lighting or on okay. microphones, just sound quality? Mm -hmm. So for microphones and sound quality, we use the Rode Filmmaker Video Kit and we use the Tascam DR60D. It's very helpful for when you have a talent that likes to move around a lot, especially uh, Gary Vee. He has, he has a mic on all the yes. time. Yes. To record those microphones, we sync them all up in a field recorder that records high quality audio for both the podcast and the Tom Ferry show. Cool. Lighting wise, we lighting. have two standard light boxes, soft boxes. They're, you can call them anything. They're basically soft boxes, light boxes that are available on Amazon or eBay for really cheap, 50 to $60. Mm -hmm. No big deal. You don't need fancy equipment. I think that's the one thing I want to stress because when you're hearing yeah. about all these different cameras and lighting and equipment, you know, you're talking about maybe a $500 investment, depending upon the camera you buy, yes. you could be $5,000, mm -hmm. right? But middle of the road, low to middle of the road for someone that's just getting into this, $1,000, $500 for a camera, what do you recommend? I would say no more than $1,000 to start with for a good camera. Mm -hmm. If you want a really, really good camera, I would say invest up to $2,000 or $3,000. But I would say for all my you know friends watching, that's you know, for that person that is on your team who's gone from using the iPhone, they're editing an iMovie and everything else, and you want to level up. So, you know, know where you're at. Um, so let's switch gears and, and let's, let's talk about what some would call non-professional, but it's the only way that, you know, I've ever done it, which is iPhone videos yes. and, you know, phone video, Google, whatever. Yes. I'm old school. I used to have a flip video camera. Are you even old enough to remember what a flip video camera yeah, is? Yeah, you'd, yeah. You'd film it, you'd hit the button, uh -huh. the, you know. 2007. Right? Yeah. Boom, you pop it in. Do you want to upload this? Yes. Uh -huh. It was hysterical. But Christoph Chu, Kyle Whistle, Tim Smith, mm -hmm. Eileen Rivera, Lisa Doyle, all these amazing clients and coaches, we all got started that way in 2009. Mm -hmm. So talk to us about today. What are some of the cool things we can use that are just on our phone? For those of you who want to begin creating videos, for those of you who can't afford huge camera budgets or huge production budgets, we all actually own a good camera, and that's our phones. Everyone in the Western world has a smartphone. Yes. Most people have a smartphone. Cameras are getting better on those phones every single year. Yep. And actually, we're shooting this episode on a phone mm -hmm. just to prove a point to say, hey, Phones work too. Yes. So we're shooting with two different phones. We're recording through my phone. One reason I would say to shoot with a phone is because it's easy to shoot, easy to record, and you can just publish it, share it immediately. Yes. As opposed to what we have, our production here at the Tom Ferry Show, everything takes about a week. But with your phone, it's just going to take five, 10 seconds after it, shooting. It's Instagram in yes. your car. Hey, just looked at this beautiful three bedroom bungalow at the corner mm -hmm. of Hamahama, Nana Nana. What a fabulous opportunity. If you or someone you know is interested, yeah. let me know on your Instagram story, Facebook Live. I just came out of the most unbelievable property, the most spectacular bathroom I've ever seen. Matter of fact, here, let's go back inside and you walk in with your phone and yeah. show them the bathroom. This is what people are looking for. Today, you know, we had the, uh, the CEO of Ren Ren in the office mm -hmm. um, several months ago, and you know, Ren Ren is arguably one of the big social media sites in China. Some people would say Facebook of China, you know, like WeChat obviously being mm -hmm. a huge one as well. And when he was showing me Ren Ren on his phone, it was nothing but video. There was no text, there was no photos. It was all video. So we know with our phone today, you can reach millions of people on Facebook and Instagram mm -hmm. alone. So we definitely want to stress that. Anything yes. else on the phone you recommend? What about editing, adding music, adding text? Anything you recommend? Three tips to shoot professional video with your smartphone. One, always have adequate lighting. Right here, we're shooting indoors. We have multiple lights going on. If you're shooting outdoors, make sure you shoot out in the sun, not in the dark. Smartphones and all cameras, they work a lot better with more light. The more yes. light there is, the better the quality it's going to be. So that's one, make sure you have enough lighting because the sensors in these phones are really small, really, really small, so they need more light than a regular camera. 
Number two would be audio. Audio is a huge thing. When you communicate a message, there's mm -hmm. visual information, there's audio information, but audio, in my opinion, trumps video. Yes. I'd Ex rather have... Experience for the person that's watching. Yes. You know, we, we've all seen those videos before where you're like, wow, what an amazing setting, what an amazing yes. scene, but there's wind in Chicago, yes. and they're like, hey, what's... And you're like, off. It's more distracting. Exactly. So, so do you recommend a microphone for the phone or something like what, what you put on me here? When it comes to audio, I would definitely recommend using your phones. So I remember back in my film school days, we've definitely used smartphones and film sets. I used to hide phones on the set. So like you had you had like you and me, a scene we're doing together. I used to have a phone underneath the table or behind the vase. So you can use your own phone's microphone, but one thing I would recommend is to either use your earbuds. Earbuds work very well. Mm -hmm. But if you want a more professional look, you can go with your lavalier microphone, which just clips to your jacket or your shirt. And they can buy this on Amazon for yes, Amazon. 50 bucks, 60 yes, bucks. 50, 60 dollars without breaking the bank. There's also, like we've seen, like, these boom microphones. Yes. Where you're, you know, it kind of looks like this thing protruding out and someone just standing there with their phone, yeah. right? They're filming and boom, it's getting perfect sound quality. Yeah, we actually have a microphone, a boom microphone right here. Yes. Four options you can use. Either your phone's own microphone, you can use your earbuds, you can use a shotgun extension on mm -hmm. your phone, or you could use a lavalier. So if you're doing interviews, I would recommend using a shotgun microphone mm -hmm. because if you only have one phone and one lavalier mic, you can't mic the other person. Another quick tip, the closer the microphone is to your voice, to your mouth, the better the quality. So quick test, I wanna show these guys. This is the audio coming from a regular phone. That's the audio coming from a shotgun microphone. This is the audio coming from my professional wireless road filmmaker kit. And this is the audio coming from Tom's microphone. Hello, hello, hello. There we go. Boy, if you're sitting right now in a surround sound watching this on your Apple TV, I bet that was really interesting. Yes, yes. So you're kind of going super nerdy here, buddy. So Sorry. <laughs> I love it, I love it. So one is lighting, two is audio. Yes. What's the, what's the third? The third would be stabilization. When we all shoot with our phones, we usually hold it up here so we can get a good angle. When you take selfies, you always do this. Yep. But after having maybe two, three, four, five, maybe 10 takes with your phone, your arms tend to get tired. Mm -hmm. So because of that, you start getting wobbly and shaky. And who likes wobbly video? No, who, no one. who wants no that? One. No one. So one thing I would recommend is getting a tripod for your phone. Yep, good idea. We currently have a, uh, an extension for a tripod, which connects your regular tripod to your phone, or you can get your selfie stick right here, your regular Tom Ferry selfie stick. Yep. Richard, is there a fourth tip that you recommend? I mean, you, you've shot a gazillion videos. Yes. So besides lighting and stabilization and obviously great audio quality, is there a fourth tip? I would say location, Tom. The location where you shoot, whether it's indoors and outdoors, has to be great for video, meaning one has to have enough light and it has to have enough sound. But for, you know, for them, they're yeah. thinking about they're walking through a house and they've got a drone video, maybe they, there's no audio, mm -hmm. and then they flash to them and they're in the kitchen yeah. or they're outside near a fountain and the fountain is just too yeah. loud yeah. and becomes a distraction. Even though it looks beautiful yes. on set, it doesn't sound right. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it's just, would you say it's trial and error or, hey, is there a book that you recommend? What was that? Definitely, yeah. Where's the funny book that you... I think it's yeah, yeah. All right, here it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, I thought, so just take a look at that title, right? Absolutely love it. So, How to Shoot Video That Doesn't Suck. And this, yes. is, this is an older book, correct? Yes, I bought that when I was in college. I like the quote by the like 16-year-old, like two years of film school and 248 pages. <laughs> yes. So this is an excellent book that you should, would you recommend this for them to buy or for the person that's gonna help them with their Both. production? Both, so if you excellent. wanna work on your own videos or if you wanna train someone who wants to shoot video, who wants to learn how to shoot video, this book is perfect. Awesome, all right, so as we wrap up, they got a lot of stuff, there's gonna be a huge blog, there's gonna be all kinds of things for you to do. Um, I know what the final takeaway is. Yes. Right? Because it's the same thing we've been doing, and that is practice. Practice, practice. practice. People are like, Tom, I, this morning I'm, I'm in the gym, mm -hmm. and my trainer says, well, see, it's easy for you, even though he's getting really hot on Instagram. He's like, it's easy for you, man. You shoot videos all the time. And I'm like, Richard, I have been practicing for, you know, since I was 20 doing sales meetings, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. when you do something for, you know, in this case, nearly you know two and a half decades, yes. you get pretty good. So the key for you is, what have you said in your schedule? I'm gonna shoot a video every day. You don't always have to publish it. 
But just like we would practice a dialogue mm -hmm. to become comfortable or I'd recite my presentation in my head yes. over and over again, is it that kind of practice or are there any other hacks or tips that you would recommend? I mean, should they get a teleprompter, right? What do you think? I would just say practice, practice, practice and keep creating content because even though you have all this knowledge of how to create videos, you still need to practice what you learn. Yeah. And the more you practice, the more you're going to master it. You know, 10,000 hours of mastery. Of course. I would say practice and make mistakes and learn from those mistakes. Hey, man, so nine years behind the camera, first yes. time on the camera. Yes. Big shout out. Super proud of you, buddy. I'm going to give you guys one little tip. So here we are. You got all this content now in terms of like the mechanics of phone and equipment and lighting and, you know, all this good stuff. Um, and we let's let's make sure we link up editing apps, mm -hmm. apps to put text on. Mm -hmm. Let's put all that stuff inside the blog as well. But I'm going to show you just one thing that you can do to go out and create another 25 to 30 videos that will truly have you become the market leader, the expert, the knowledge broker of your town. And that is, you ask yourself two questions. Question number one: What are the pain points a client experiences when buying a home today? And if you really map it out and you mastermind and you brainstorm with some friends, maybe your transaction coordinator, call your loan officer, call your title rep, ask your broker manager, if you can make up a list of the 15 or 20 things that just drive the consumers nuts, not you, not the other agents, but make it that, you know, where the buyers laying there in bed at night pulling their hair out saying, is it gonna work? What are all those things? And then every one of them, you know what you do? You shoot a video saying, there's 15 reasons that cause a home to fall apart or a transaction to be challenging. Number one is you explain it and then you say how you solve it. And if you would just go problem, solution, problem, solution, problem, solution, and then tag it appropriately yes. in YouTube and do it on Facebook and Instagram, people will say, you know, that Richard guy, like he's with it, like he really understands. So that'd be the first question. The second question I would do is I would ask myself, what are the concerns and worries of future home sellers? Like that person that's thinking about putting their home on the market, what are their worries, what are their concerns? I'd mastermind and brainstorm, what are the things they say? What are they nervous about? You know, we're gonna sell fast, but where do we move? Am I gonna get the highest possible net proceeds? How do I select the right agent? What should I look for? All these things are what's on the mind of your customers. And then if you can take the time to answer and give them solutions and feedback about that, you're the knowledge broker, you're the one they're gonna choose. So I would just take everything you got here and create a little 2018 initiative called Kill It On Video with all of Richard's content, all of his techniques and yes. all the things I just shared. Any, any closing thoughts for your first time on video? Well, I need more practice, practice, practice. Yes, you do. But you know what? Hey, man, thank you so thank much you. for everything you do and the impact you've had on our business. And you're allowing so many of our users to get access to our content around the world. And he got a viral video oh, last yeah. November. Yeah. How many views? 600,000 as 600, of today. He, he sends me this message. Hey, man, it went viral. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Yes. And it wasn't a Tom Ferry show. It was just a clip of a video from the summit that he uploaded and bam. Yep. Good job, buddy. Hey. Thanks so much for watching. Remember always, your strategy matters, and now more than ever, your ability to use the right technology and the right scripts to make beautiful videos, that's what rules. See you guys soon. Hey, I'm sure you have lots of questions. Make sure you post them down below. Myself and Richard and the team will answer every one of your questions, and hey, maybe shoot another show or just do a blog just for you. So let's see those questions. Hey, you're the kind of person like me who's always looking for great stuff, new ideas, innovation, and ways to improve my life and my business. Check out the link below at tomferry.com forward slash agent dash tools because I've got lots of great stuff for you there.